please join me in welcoming Mr. David Mann. The wind was blowing this way, I was trying to go that way. That was the problem all along, the waves were going this way, the wind was pushing me this way, and I wanted to fight it and go that way. So I tipped the canoe over. We were floating in the water for a while, all our stuff was floating around us, and we screamed for help in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you know, you figure, well, I saw that in the movie, so that's what you do when you fall in the lake, you scream for help! And so we did. We screamed for help, and we we're nowhere, right? But as luck would have it, there was a boat with people fishing just over here, and they came over and they said, well, we'll help you out as soon as we're done fishing. And they went back. <laughs> Thanks, Minnesota. <laughs> and we, uh, they did, we, we pushed that boat in, and uh, we got out. They did join us. They lit a fire, dried us off, put our canoe on their trailer, and drove us off to safety. Now, I learned a lot that day, because by that point, it was totally dark, and we never would have made it around that five ring of lakes. That wind had picked up so much and was pushing us that direction. I was insisting on going this direction. I was determined to get there. But the wind insisted harder and pushed me that way. And that day, I learned a big lesson that I think about all the time. Are you going to fight the wind or are you going to work with it? Change is going to happen to you. We don't like that, but change is going to happen to you. Things beyond your control are going to control you and your destiny sometimes. We hate that though, but it's a fact of life and the wind does pick up and pushes you off course. And you're going to want to resist it. But what happens if you don't? What happens if you look for different openings in the woods besides the one you think you have to get to? We're going to look at today how individuals and organizations can use the winds of change to move them to a new direction rather than resisting and tipping over. The ability to connect to another human being means the difference between success and failure. And sometimes bridging that gap and getting across to another human being authentically is just a matter of understanding communication style. What's yours and what's theirs? All right, here's another secret I'm gonna share with you today. <laughs> Don't you love statements like this? There are two kinds of people in the world. Two, that's it. Dogs and cats when it comes to communication. That's it, dogs and cats. I've, I've simplified all of the Myers-Briggs, all of the insights, all of that, where you end up with 55 different kinds of people. I say, no, let's just go with two. <laughs> the fun thing and the important thing is to know who you are and then be able to recognize who the other person is. Dogs are the people that are like this. Oh, I got something to say. I got something, can I say, I got something to say. I got this thing that I got to say. No, no, wait, wait, I know, I know we had an agenda today, but um, I got this thing I really want to say, okay? It's really important, and I'm going to say it now. Okay, it's, oh, is that all right, okay? All right, okay, all right, I said it, great. Oh, there's another thing. And they go on like this, and they kind of tend to, can kind of dominate the proceedings. The thing about the dogs is, yeah, there's a lot of energy there. You know where you stand with them, and they are open and transparent because they are absolutely saying whatever is in their mind comes out of their mouth. There is no filter, it just comes right out. So there's no mystery. And of course the downside is they can seem a little needy, can waste a little time, and might come across as being domineering because of this sort of slight disrespect for the rules. The other type is the cat. And you all know these people too. They are like, I am patiently waiting my turn to speak so that I can say the very precise thing that I've worked out to say. <laughs> it will be accurate and verifiable. You can look it up. <laughs> right? Those are the cats. And they do just that. They wait to speak because they have it worked out. They know what they're going to say. And they're very respectful of time at a meeting 
they are very, uh, very precise, and they, they do have backup for what they say. Of course, the downside is you always wonder, do they hate me? What's the problem? Why are they acting like that? I wish they would open up more, right? So if you get dogs and cats together, there's an uncomfortable mix sometimes. If you get cats with cats and dogs with dogs, there tends not to be. The dogs may beat each other up. The cats may all sit in silence. But everybody's happy. If you get dogs and cats, it's when you start to have misunderstandings of why, why does she just not talk to me? Why doesn't she talk to me? You know? Or the other side, why does he keep talking all the time, all the time, all the time? We are on a timeline. How advantageous and strategic for an entire organization to harness all of that energy that comes from people's innate geniuses and use that to move forward. Say yes to limitations, visualize the improbable. Recognize your own genius and get back to your own soil. Sit out in your own audience, see yourself as the character you want to be, and find a need for that. Because the end is now. The future is here. <laughs>